Hello you, if you're a Potterhead then you may love to know that there are some Annick Castle Harry Potter filming locations that you can visit in Northumberland. It makes a magical day out as not only can you chase filming locations but you can have a go at broomstick flying and even eat in a tree house that looks like the Wheezy's Burrows. Come and join me on a magical day out in Annick. So hello there and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Sophie from Third Eye Traveller and I make magical videos from places that feel like a fairy tale. Today I'm here in Annick, which is a famous Harry Potter filming location for Hogwarts. And I'm going to be showing you some of the filming locations here at Annick castle now there are lots of filming locations that you can see around the castle but they also have some immersive experiences like learning to fly a boomstick and shows as well so if you are interested in harry potter film locations or you're a potterhead make sure to keep watching as i'll be filming some of the filming locations today so Annick Castle is a grade one listed castle and country home in the town of Annick in Northumberland. It's been the home of the Percy family for over 700 years who were involved in the War of the Roses and even mentioned in Shakespeare plays. But those who are fans of Harry Potter will recognise this instantly as Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The entire castle was used as the backdrop for the first two movies and there are tons of filming locations that you can visit on the grounds and I'm going to be taking you through six of the filming locations that you can visit in Annick Castle now. Okay, so let's talk through some of the Harry Potter filming locations here at Annick Castle. Potterheads may recognise this tower behind me. This is where Neville gets caught in his broom when they're having the broomstick flying classes. So yes, now you all recognise the Bailey Tower, which is where poor Neville gets caught in his broom during broomology with Madame Hooch. Eventually he gets his cloak caught on one of the statues and got away with just a broken wrist. They do usually do broomstick training here at Annick, right here in the castle courtyard, but because of the bad weather, they've cancelled it today. But I have bought my own broomstick to do some uh, flying lessons <laughs> and I'll do some photos for you here. I'm going to be teaching you how to take these flying photos as well. I'll teach you how to take a flying broomstick photo here at Annick Castle. As I say, they usually do broomstick training right here, but because of the bad weather, they've had to put in the artisan courtyard, so I bought my own broom from the gift shop. So I'm going to tell you to do it. So first off, you need your camera and your, or your mobile phone. Second, you need a broomstick. And third, you need some energy. So let me show you. So we're going to have our broom. Get your person ready, put it between your legs, okay? And then you're gonna have someone press really fast on the buzzer, I'll have your burst mode on, and then you're gonna jump in quick succession, like this. <laughs> and then if you look, you should have a picture of you flying on your broom at Annick Castle, and I think that it makes such a great photo opportunity. So I hope you like your flying broom tip lesson. Alternatively, you can, Drop your broom and then reverse the video so it looks like you're going up and the video and the broom comes up to you. Ooh. As I said, the broomstick training is usually completely free and you just need to get a ticket when you come here. You don't need to book or pay. They just have a ticket you can pick up and then you can usually do the broomstick training right here in the courtyard. But it's weather dependent, so today is a very gloomy, lovely day for Hogwarts, but not great broomstick flying. On the day of your visit make sure to check the what's on today board and see when the broomstick training is happening as I said on the day of my visit there was inclement weather but you can find they usually hold it in the artisan's courtyard if not just buy your own broomstick and have a go because I do think it's worth it to get those incredible photo opportunities. Okay so the second filming location here at Annick Castle is where they do the broomstick training with Professor Flitwick. So if you remember, they are putting the brooms on the floor and they're screaming up and then they're getting their brooms to fly. So I got my professors mixed up there. It was Madame Hooch who taught the broomstick flying class. And this is where you can usually have a go at doing it yourself. Um, you will also recognize this area where Harry Potter was speaking with Oliver Wood about Quidditch. And this is where Oliver Wood gets the box with the ball, quaffle and golden snitch to teach Harry how to play. So after that, we're going to be heading out of that courtyard and into the main castle courtyard, which is where the entrance to Annick Castle is. 
you'll recognize this scene from the first movie where Hagrid is dragging the Christmas tree towards the Great Hall at Christmas time. According to the staff, it wasn't Christmas or winter at the time and they had to cover this whole area with snow and it was apparently a nightmare to clean up. It actually took months as there was just so much to clean up and sort out. This is the fourth Harry Potter film location at Annette Castle and that is where Ron is talking about Hermione behind her back as the Hogwarts students leave the classroom. If you remember Hermione got quite upset and barged past Ron uh, sniffing on her way to the toilets and fortunately to get turned into a cat. So if we rewind back to the very first movie, I think one of the most memorable scenes is when they're having their charms class and Hermione is making fun of Ron, saying it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> anyway, afterwards, Ron is not happy about the fact that Hermione is making fun of him and so he's essentially talking about Hermione to Harry behind her back. She, of course, starts to cry and barges past them, heading to the girls' bathroom, unfortunately, to take a Polyjuice potion which has been infected with a little cat hair. So when the giant has been unleashed in Hogwarts and Harry and Ron meet her, she has the face of a cat. So yes, where Hermione walks off in a huff is just outside of where you can enter the castle staterooms. So the fifth Harry Potter film location at Annick Castle is this Outer Bailey and this is where Harry and Ron land in the Ford Anglia and get attacked by the Whomping Willow. Now the Whomping Willow was added with CGI, it is a real tree or was, I think it's now been felled um, and that was filmed on an estate near Surrey but the location where Harry and Ron land in the Ford Anglia because they missed the Hogwarts Express is right here in Annick Castle. So this in a courtyard featured in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and it's where Ron and Harry fly in the Ford Anglia towards Hogwarts and end up crashing into the Whomping Willow. You will notice that the Whomping Willow isn't there on your visit, it was unfortunately some amazing CGI but you can follow through to the inner courtyard archway and this is where the car spits out their luggage and decides to leave them and drive off and the Harry and Ron enter Hogwarts with their tails between their legs feeling a little bit foolish but at least they have made it to Hogwarts. Okay so I've just had a tour inside the state rooms here at Annette Castle. You can't take videos or photos unfortunately but it's still worth going in because the rooms are immaculate and they have some of the most beautiful art pieces that you can find in the country. I'm now going to be going on the rampart walk and have a look around the castle because I didn't do this before and so I thought I'd try and do it now. So yes, there is so much that you can explore at Annick Castle and if you head to the Constable's Tower, you can head up to the Upper Ramparts Walk. So if you're heading in here, you can see all sorts of weaponry that was used to defend the castle over the years. But my favourite part was heading up to the castle walls and walking along to see the fabulous views of the castle from up high. It makes an incredible photo opportunity and again, this is more of Hogwarts scenery. You can also see some of the Northumberland countryside, such as the rolling hills and the river. But yes, I would definitely recommend heading up to the ramparts. It's completely included in your ticket and it's such a wonderful opportunity. A lot of the time in English castles, the ramparts aren't safe anymore, but annex are perfectly preserved. I can't imagine what it would have been like years ago, especially if you were sort of the infantry standing on these walls to defend the castle. It must have been a completely different time, but I absolutely love these kind of faux statues on here. They almost look like sentries. After you've had a walk on the ramparts, I would recommend heading towards the Annick Garden through this archway where you will find the last Harry Potter filming location I wanted to show you. This is the entrance to Hogwarts or was in the first two movies and this is where the Golden Trio go to meet Hagrid at his hut. You can get some wonderful pictures and backdrops of Hogwarts um, from this location as well and it's a really great photo opportunity especially if you are dressed up in your robes or wanted to capture the castle in its entirety. 
last Harry Potter location here in Alec that I want to show you is this Lion Arch. If you remember in the first movie, the Golden Trio, Harry, Hermione and Ron head to Hagrid's hut from Hogwarts and this is the scene that you see which is the famous Lion Arch of Alec Castle and this really does make me feel like I'm in Hogwarts. So let's just talk a little bit about some of the extra Harry Potter immersive experiences that you can do here at Alec rather than chasing down the filming locations. Of course I've already spoken about the broomstick training this is weather dependent but I highly recommend if it's not running to buy your own broomstick and have a go at flying in front of the castle. There's also tons of Harry Potter souvenirs and gifts that you can buy in the gift shop like robes and scarves and wands which is super fun. And there's also a really cool restaurant that I'm going to be heading into in a minute, which is called the Annick Treehouse. And this always reminds me of the Weasley's Burrows. So I'm going to be going there for lunch in a minute and I'm going to be showing you this amazing experience. Before we head into the Treehouse restaurant, I just wanted to go over some extra things that you can do at Annick Castle that don't involve Harry Potter. The Annick Castle day ticket isn't exactly cheap, but there is lots of things to do here. Um, on your day out so the first thing i would recommend is the dragon's quest this was absolutely fabulous it's kind of like a mirror maze um and your mission is to kind of save the world or save the castle from the dragon i had such a laugh in here it might be a little scary for little ones but i was laughing the entire time Another one of my favourite things to do is to head into the artisan's courtyard. This place is great and is totally cool if you love anything like medieval history. They have music playing and lots of activities where you can press your own coins, make your own uh, crafts. They have thrones that you can sit on. They have dress up opportunities where you can dress as a king or queen. They even have dragon eggs, um, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, this whole area is just super fun and is really one of the hearts of the castle of course the state rooms are fun but this is really where you get some of these medieval immersive activities you can see an armory there's a little cafe where you can grab a tea or drink and then you have this really cool alcove which is almost like an alchemist's lair or something it was really cool and totally gave off a harry potter vibe as well if you've ever wanted to try your hand at archery, they do have lessons throughout the day. These do cost a little extra money. Um, and if you wanted to see some of the famous filming locations at Annick Castle, like Harry Potter or Downton Abbey, or any of the other films that they filmed here, they do have movie tours throughout the day that you can join. Always check the What's On Today board to see what's happening on your visit. But yes, there is so much cool stuff that you can do at Annick Castle that makes it worth visiting. Now, let's go visit the Annick Treehouse restaurant. As I said, this always reminds me of the Weasley's Burrows and is such a magical experience that you can have here if you are looking for a place to eat during your visit. Now I'm gonna be heading into the amazing Annick Treehouse for an early dinner. I absolutely love this restaurant. As I said, it always reminds me of the Weasley's Burrows and there's usually some suspension bridges that you can climb on. I think they're shut for renovation but definitely come here if you are a Potterhead. This whole place has such a magical feel. Um, just make sure to book online in advance because usually the tables are completely sold out for weeks. So definitely make sure to plan ahead. So yes, the whole place is a giant tree house. And in fact, this has won the award for the largest tree house in the world. If you book early enough, you can enjoy a magical dinner inside. And as soon as you walk in, it's filled with these amazing branches and fairy lights, which totally gives off a bit of a Harry Potter Weasley's burrow vibe. Or if you're someone who read The Magic Faraway Tree by Enid Blyton, this also reminded me of that as well. I thought it would be good to mention that you don't need a ticket to either the castle or the gardens to eat at the restaurant. Just make sure that you've booked your tickets. You can also get free parking if you're eating at the restaurant as well. They have a varied menu where they use seasonal and local ingredients. I decided to have the steak or chips and it was absolutely amazing. I always find that the food here at Annick Castle is great. They have an amazing range of cocktails as well. Um, I wanted to have one of their Poison Gardens cocktails, um, which is inspired by the Poison Garden at Annick Gardens, uh, but they were sold out on the day, which is a shame. Um, but you know, a diet coke did just as well as i was quite parched from all the jumping around on my broomstick 
But yes, so I treated myself to the steak for lunch, which was super filling and really tasty. And then to finish, I had their cherry blossom tree dessert with candy floss. And if you didn't know, Anik Garden is really famous for their cherry blossom festival. I've been before, and so this was just a really nice touch, I think. And it was an incredible meal here again. I've eaten here a few times now and had an amazing experience every single time. And I would highly, highly recommend it. After you can have a look around, there's usually bridges that you can climb over and you can even have a little look into the largest play park in the world, which is Linodori. So after my dinner, I decided to head down to the famous Lion Bridge, which again is a backdrop shot for Hogwarts in the first two movies. It's such a cool location that you can visit and it's just outside of the castle. It makes an amazing photo opportunity and a great chance to burn off those calories. Pause ahead looking for some magical accommodation here in Anna. I recommend Crux, which is just five minutes from the castle. It's just around the corner. I stayed in the dark quarters, which is perfect for the Slytherin house. And so you can stay there for the night and then come to Hogwarts in the morning. So here is a mini room tour of my room at Crux, which was the dark quarters. It's perfect if you're a Slytherin fan. And I absolutely loved all the bric-a-brac of portraits that are on the walls they even had the black family tapestry wallpaper which is super cool because you could see characters like bellatrix and draco on the walls they had these awesome chandeliers and it was a really comfy and cozy stay it was a little noisy as you're right by the road but and it's quite a small place and quite quiet so i didn't hear the noise too much but yeah i had a really nice night's stay before my visit and you wake up in the morning to this incredible Fullings breakfast, which will set you up for a day of Harry Potter film location chasing. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed our Harry Potter tour of Anik Castle. I've had such a great time here today. It's always a great day here at Anik, and I do recommend spending the day here as they have lots of attractions, um, including the Anik Gardens and their Linodori. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want more magical videos like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up or subscribe for more magic. I'll see you next time.